Uh, hey, William Duvall of Alice in Chains. Nice to talk with you. My first time talking with you. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on. Although I've seen you many times. I've seen, mm -hmm. uh, I saw uh, the first tour you did with the band uh, mm -hmm. those years ago, and I saw the most recent and some shows in between. So definitely familiar with you. Uh, but cool. And uh, awesome. mainly... Uh, we're playing the Who song, the Mongolian rockers, uh, called This is Mongol. And uh, I guess there's a distinction because there was a previous version, I understand. And then yours uh, is subtitled Warrior Souls, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Um, so they they did a all Mon an all Mongolian version of the song, released that in... 2022 and then uh and then as has been their pattern over the course of their recorded career they go back and revisit their previously their their latest previously released album and do a deluxe version of, of their of their latest album with um western you know american usually but western musicians that rework some of the songs from that previous record do new versions of them guest appearances on them um so that's what's happened in the past with them and that's what they're continuing now with asking me to be involved and so yeah i mean it's uh it's really cool uh, i was so honored to be asked and i um, very pleased with the result <laughs> Yeah, that seems to be uh, a successful pattern for them, uh, you know, doing that and a wise move. I mean, to break into, you know, Western culture. I mean, it's great. And people have really kind of gravitated towards it and accepted it. Uh, yeah. Maybe, I don't know if it's surprising to them, but it's certainly uh, refreshing to hear. I can tell you to play something like that on the air. Uh, yeah. Refreshing, yeah. I think uh, yeah. I think we could use a little bit more of that. Um, I don't I I did an interview uh, with one of the members a few years ago, and they weren't quite speaking English yet. I don't know if they've kind of started to. I don't. I'm sure you've interacted with them. Um, are they starting to pick that up? Or are they still sticking to their native tongue? I actually have never met them, and uh, but my understanding is that no they are pretty much uh they're they have to do things through an interpreter yeah. and so my interactions with their uh well my interactions with them have been indirect through their team and um but you know having said that i would say that uh we we have met one another in the way that really counts which is through the music um, so we're, we're now, we're now musical brothers for sure. Um, and I do look forward to meeting them, uh, at some point soon, hopefully. Um, but yeah, this record for this record, I worked remotely and, um, you know, I, I produced and, and mixed this track as well. So I, I, I sort of wrote a song within the song, you know, rather than just like, oh, here's some English interpretation of these previously written lyrics that were in Mongolian, you know, can you just sing this or something? I, I sort of wrote a song, a, a new song within the song and then fused uh, the two together, right? So I recorded all my parts and, and of course I was sent all of their sound files in order to incorporate what they had done. And, uh, and I just, I, I put it all together and sent it and thankfully they, they really, they really loved it. And so there we are. But, you know, I think, I think uh, there, there's no, no better way to get to know a band than working with their, their sound files, you know, <laughs> working with all their individual tracks, you really get to kind of know what they're made of, what, what makes up their sound. Uh, so that was, that was really quite an experience. Uh, and one of the aspects of their music is the throat singing and I, I imagine, I mean, you're a vocalist, I'm not. I would imagine it's a technique that takes some time to, you know, to get right. Have you tried that or can you do it? 
No, man, I, I, I would not pretend to go down that road. Um, you know, it's a, that is, as you say, it's a very specific technique. It's a very ancient technique. Um, and I wouldn't want to explore something like that without, uh, you know, proper instruction. And, and I imagine there are probably some voices that are, that have a, a, a better aptitude toward that type of singing than others. Um, you know, I can, I, I mean, my range is, 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 is pretty good. I mean, I can get down pretty low into kind of, you know, sort of, uh, getting down into that sort of where you're almost getting into harmonic stuff, um, where it gets, it can get close to what you may associate with Tibetan monks and that sort of thing. Um, but I only would use that in a sort of like a recording, uh, situation. I wouldn't, that's not something that, you know, those, those, those guys, like the, the, the people like the who, who can do throat singing or the monks who do their type of um, vocalizing when they're, when they're meditating, that is, uh, that's serious stuff. You know, um, I can approximate it for the purposes of a record. I actually use some of that on this record. Um and, uh, and it, you know, it's kind of layered in there with all the other vocals I did. So I'm singing in multiple octaves throughout, you know, especially the verse that I wrote. You'll, you can hear multiple octaves going on there. Well, at the bottom of that, there's something that gets down really low for my range. And, it, you know, and that was cool to employ for this. But <laughs> as far as like, you know, yeah. taking it any further than that, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't presume to do something like that, you know. Those, I'll leave. I'll leave that to those guys. <laughs> yeah, they're really good at it. Uh, mm -hmm. When did you first kind of catch wind of the band? A few years ago, I uh, you know saw a video clip and was like, "Wow, okay, this is this is interesting." I mean, it, that's one thing they 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 catch your attention. I mean, it's it's a it's a unique and novel approach they're taking, both visually and sonically. So, you know. Uh, there's no, there's no mistaking it. You, you, you definitely have to deal with it. It's like, it's like, oh, wow, okay, like, it's half a dozen Genghis Khans coming down the mountain. They're gonna take the town, and uh, you know, and and they're gonna do it to uh, to a heavy metal beat. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like they're gonna do it with guitars. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's cool. Awesome. It's cool. Yeah. Very cool. I dug it. I, uh, I think uh, you know you think of different vocalists that could probably work within their music. Uh, you didn't come to mind for whatever reason, but it was the combination <laughs> that I needed to have. Right on. Is, um, probably my favorite single that I've heard from them so far. Uh, oh, that's great. Definitely. I mean, I immediately was like, oh, this is, this is a rocker. This is a hit. This is going to do it. And uh, I love it. I love the tune. Um, right on. So I'm Thank so, you. I'm super happy that that you did it and you got to experience that with them. Let's uh let's talk a little bit about uh Alice in Chains because uh you are approaching I don't know what I would call maybe legacy years now because it's almost I mean we're coming close to 20 years that you've been mm -hmm. in the band. Um do you look at it that way? Do you feel that way? Has time gone by too fast with how how do you look at it? Yeah, time is a strange thing, or I should say our perception of time is a strange thing, because in some ways, certain events that occurred feel like they happened five minutes ago, and it was really like, you know, 15, 16 years ago. And then certain things um, feel like they happened 100 years ago. <laughs> it's like, it's it's, uh, it's really interesting, but uh, no, very uh, proud and feel very fortunate to have been able to accomplish all that we have in in that amount of time i mean uh all the records all the tours all those shows um you know like you said it's it's legacy years at this point um we don't take any of it for granted um it's it's been a it's been an interesting ride for sure you know and and we're still digging it and and thankfully so are the people and the people are still digging it that's what counts so um but yeah it, it, yeah, it's in, in some ways it feels like yesterday. In other ways, it feels like a lifetime. 
<laughs> it's been um, ooh, several years since uh, Rainier Fog. What's uh, what's on the horizon for the band? I really couldn't say right now. We're we're kind of uh, taking our time uh, apart. I mean, we we did do a tour last year of you know late summer early fall throughout the united states so um you know that was cool because it had been a while um and you know obviously events in the world uh sort of prohibited that kind of traveling um so we were able to finally kind of make up for lost time in that in that regard last year and it was great to do it uh we had a good time we're extremely thankful that that uh, the folks showed up and we, we all had a, a blast together. Um, and, you know, now we're kind of taking, taking some time apart again. Uh, Cantrell's still doing his solo tour. I actually just saw him a couple of weeks ago. He came uh, through Atlanta and I went down to sound check and uh, said hello to everybody. And it was really nice, you know, he was obviously having fun and, um, and, you know, we were talking about the tour. We were talking about this this Who single that I've done. Uh, you know, just catching up and really just digging, watching each other be in such a, a happy place. You know what I mean? Um, so it was it was cool. It was really cool. And then I had to leave because I had to do some press <laughs> for the Who single. So I you know I had to leave even even before I otherwise would have. Um, but no, it's great. And I think that helps those kinds of things help keep the whole thing together and, and keep keep the machine rolling. You know, you need that time apart because when we do it, we really do it full on. You know, well, that's for sure. I, uh, you know, I know you're doing the, you know, the press now and you've done the single uh, with the who. But what are the other things that keep you busy when you're not doing the Alice in Chains stuff? What are what are you you know, oh my gosh right? so many things i mean I, I i for one thing i i run a label um so a small boutique label that i've run for uh gosh you know 25 years now um and uh so there's catalog there that i deal with i, I put out records through it you know, new records through it and also manage the catalog of it um so i actually put out my second solo album last year uh, last june and that's a live in the studio power trio record. Um, just went in, set up and laid it down direct to disc, right? So not only are we playing and the music is being mixed in real time as we're playing, but also the lacquer disc that's going to be used to make the vinyl LP is being cut simultaneously as we're playing. So everybody's on the hook, the musicians obviously, but also the recording and mix engineers. And then the lacquer cutting engineer dropping that needle on that lathe, you know, we're all on the hook. And if anybody messes up at any point, you got to start all over again. You essentially go in and you drop the needle on side one and then you play side one just as you want to hear it, you know, and everything that's happening in between songs is going down for posterity as well. Anything, chatter, noise of any kind, um, tune-ups, everything's going down on the record and then you do the same thing for side two so that was really exciting um we were we were just so proud of how that came out it's really powerful kind of lightning the bottle moment you feel the energy of it and uh it's really rocking so that came out last year and uh you know just really proud of that and it's doing i mean the response to it's been really incredible um and then uh, also last year, I finally got to do my solo tour of Europe in the UK. That was originally for my first solo album, which is completely different than this newest one. The first solo album, one alone, all acoustic, one voice, one guitar for the whole record. And I went out and did a one man show to tour it. So I got to do most of the United States before the world shut down in 2020. And then I was on my way to, I was, I was really just days away from going to Europe on that tour in 2020 when everything shut down. And so those shows were postponed, postponed, postponed. I mean, you know, four times, I think. And people held onto their tickets and 
they held on to their tickets for for years <laughs> and then finally we were able to see one another in, in in person face to face last year so i got to finally do that do those shows and it was so fulfilling that was last spring um so yeah there's a lot going on uh like i said catalog I, I, there's a the, the group that i was in just prior to alice in chains and just during the early days of alice in chains uh comes with the fall that group is kind of what led to my meeting Cantrell in the first place and then some years later you know him asking me to help reconstitute Alice in Chains um that group has a catalog that I'm really proud of um you know uh three studio albums a studio EP a live album all of that I would like to put on vinyl as soon as possible finally get that done so that's a project that's still on the horizon I'd like to get started on that this year because our all of our records were recorded to tape and mixed to tape you were so they're opening for Jerry with that band Is that what it that's was? right okay. yeah that was that was one of the things that we did um you know we met in LA and uh and you know kind of quickly became virtually inseparable I mean he moved into our apartment building it was like that I mean it was you know and he he was he would come up on stage with us to play our songs with us during our set, like whenever we played in Hollywood. So eventually um, he was, he was finishing his second solo record degradation trip. And then he wanted to go and play some shows for that record, even though uh, he hadn't found anyone to put it out yet. So in 2001, we went out and just yeah. sort of did shows um, with no record out by him. And, 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 uh, our first album out and we you know sold out of that record quickly and then took a week off on the week-long break that we had during 2001 we went in and did our second so our second record and then went out and sold a truckload of those um which was great because uh we were able to do it all diy which is how i wanted to do it and then and then the following year 2002 roadrunner agreed to put out degradation trip so then we did another round of touring and we went all over the united states and canada again and went to the uk and and at that point that's when comes with the fall did our live record because there wasn't any time to go back into the studio so we just i thought well let's just bring a truck out here and record you know these shows some of these shows and so um a lot of history that led up to everything that happened with Alice in Chains since, and that band was played such a huge role in that, but moreover just played a huge role, period, right? I mean, certainly in my life and in the life of everybody who dug it. So, you know, the mission to get that stuff out on vinyl is a strong one because it was, re it was recorded in a way that lends itself to being released on vinyl. It was all analog, but we were living in the CD era at that time, the early 2000s. So, we went all analog until you couldn't go any further with it. And then we would we would go digital, put it out on CD and sell it. But the tapes are still here. And, you know, I've already remastered one of them and cut lacquers for one of them for the live album. Um, and I want to do it for all the studio records as well. Well, sometimes when people reissue something, there's maybe some new music that goes with it. Would that happen in this case? <laughs> possibly but you know in our case we didn't really have the time to uh just have a bunch of stuff you know a bunch of extra stuff laying around that we didn't put out it really was like okay we got three hours you know, and we gotta do 10 songs you know it was like it was always like that you know the stuff was always kind of like you know live basic tracks where you keep everything like scratch tracks there's no such thing and comes with the fall as a scratch track that did not exist um whatever was going down in front of a mic it was being kept and you better be on it you know so uh and then if you know whatever small overdubs would be done over that but yeah so there's not a lot of extra stuff there's a couple things but um you know for the most part it's about getting that stuff out on vinyl and then yeah if i find something that's like oh i forgot about that then that'll be a bonus oh that'd be awesome very cool. Yeah. What, uh, what kind of new stuff are you listening to these days? What kind of bands are on your radio? Ooh, wow. Um, that's a good question. Actually, you know, uh, a couple things have caught my attention recently. There's a there's a group, uh, Starbenders, that I think are pretty cool. 
Um, they just finished a tour of Europe and they've toured throughout America. I actually brought them out with us a few years back on an Alice tour, got them to open a whole leg of that tour. And they're, they're really cool, hard, hard working, uh, you know, dynamic, they're dynamic on stage and dynamic visually. It's just really cool. And then another thing, um, that I heard I stumbled onto just happened to stumble onto is uh this group Juna, I believe is how you pronounce it. And it's starts with a D. So it's D J U N A H, I think. Okay. And out of Chicago, this this girl out of Chicago freaking ripping. It's like it's a it's a it's a two piece band, but the, the so she usually has like a, a drummer with her and you know like a guy on drums, but this girl like plays guitar, sings, and then plays Taurus bass pedals for the mm -hmm. bass. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but I mean, you know, but like, it's really cool. Like the riffs are cool and, and her, it's kind of like a, a harder rocking PJ Harvey kind of thing. Like, like okay. when PJ Harvey would get at her most rocking heaviness, but you know, just, kind of more of that you know what i mean turn turn that up a few notches and then it's just more of that um so pretty cool pretty cool i gotta say yeah that sounds pretty yeah. awesome so yeah again william duvall on the new single from mongolian rockers the who it's called this is mongol subtitled warrior souls and i think it's a great song again my favorite song from them right now right on uh, man full job Thank you. Good job on on the song, man. I, thank you so much, and thank you for your support of it. Oh yeah, absolutely, and uh, and continued success with you with uh, not only this song and also with Allison Chains and anything else you got going on. Uh, right on. It's been great. I love uh, seeing you when you come through, and we'll uh, chat again soon, hopefully. I hope so too, man. All right. Yeah, dude. Good one, man. Thanks again for having me on, dude. See ya. Care, Bye.